Coach, what can you guys do to, to get better to help Davis here in the, in the passing game? Yeah, just uh, the, the one area that we really focus on is just being detailed, get opportunity to make plays, got to make it. Um, and the boys had a great practice yesterday, just you know, continue to you know, strive in that direction. Are these guys better than they've shown, do you think, in the first couple of weeks? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Arkansas State, very, very solid football team. They're 2-0 and had a big win last week against Tulsa. And, uh, you know, these guys are, you know, coming to the big house and, you know, they want to show that they belong. So, you know, they're going to, you know, they have our attention. And, uh, you know, for us, uh, you know, we just want to be detailed and make sure that, uh, you know, we show up on Saturday. I meant your receiving core. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, our, our guys are ready to roll. You know, they're ready to roll. Um, the, the good thing about us is every game, every opportunity we have uh, to practice, they grow. You know, it's a, it's a fairly young group. But, uh, you know, every day you just see them growing. They're learning. They're getting better. On the left, Ryan. How is the learning curve maybe different for a guy like Kendrick Bell, who didn't play receiver in high school compared to, like, other guys that, you know, grew up playing receiver as their primary position? Yeah, you know, he sees it differently, uh, being a quarterback, so he understands the game probably a little bit more than, than most receiver, younger receivers, I should say. Uh, you know, the thing about uh, Kendrick is last year, uh, you know, scout team, and it's something we talked about, he's grown so quickly because he got a chance to think about the DBs he went against last year in practice, Will Johnson, Josh Wallace, Mikey Samersteel. So he went against those guys every single day on scout team and got better. And then after practice every day, you see him on the jugs, you see him working on footwork, refining his skills. Off season, he's spending time with his brother, you know, working. So, um, you know, he's definitely a little bit more mature, you know, beyond his years as a receiver. Uh, but it's not a guy that went from defense to offense. It's a guy that went from quarterback, he understands the game, to, to playing receiver. And then his, his athletic traits uh, definitely helps him out tremendously. On the right here, Charles. Yeah, it seemed like Samaj kind of started to find a rhythm with Davis late in that fourth quarter. Um, you know, ended up with career high five receptions, 45 yards. What did you see from him, and how can they carry that momentum against Arkansas State and beyond? Yeah, just, you know, for us, you know, receiver wise, we're like with a new quarterback, uh, you want to make sure that you're where you're supposed to be at at the right time. And um, when an opportunity presents itself to make a play, you got to make them. And, you know, Samaj was, you know, you know make, making the most of his opportunities. He's a playmaker for us, uh, you know, one of the more dynamic guys in our room. And, you know, one of the things that we're going to put the ball in his hands and give him opportunities. And, you know, as he makes more plays, you know, more opportunities will, will be created for him. Yeah, and then Sharon mentioned that, you know, kind of simplifying the offense might benefit in the long run. Have you noticed that in practice this week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We feel like we have a great game plan. Um, and I, the one thing I t say about our kids is that they're, they're smart. You know, they're smart. Um, adaptable, they can, you know, anything, not just the receivers, but O-line, tight ends, quarterbacks, running backs, it doesn't matter what position. Uh, we ask a lot of them just because of, you know, the style of play for us. And, um, you know, for, for us as, as, you know, as coaches, we want to make sure we put the kids in the best uh, position to be successful on Saturdays. On the left, Isaiah. I have two. Uh, first, we finally got to see C.J. Charleston. He had that catch against Texas. What, how, where is he at in terms of acclimating to the offense and his kind of development? Yeah, he's ready to roll. He's he's the most experienced guy in our room, uh, you know, coming uh, from Youngstown State and, you know, a guy that, that had a ton of experience. And he's played against, uh, you know, big. I know we don't play a Big Ten team this week, but he's played against Big Ten schools before. So, um, you know, he's a guy that we're inserting him more and more, you know, just trying to, you know, he's, he's super sharp, smart. You can play him in multiple positions. Uh, you know, he's, he's definitely a veteran that, that you can rely on. And with a couple of years ago, I think it was more to 2022, not as much last year, a lot of talk about how Donovan might be the best receiver in terms of his hands and his ability. But is there, do you still work with him at all with any of that? And, and how could he figure in kind of to that this season? Yeah, no, no. Donovan is he's, obviously you guys know he's his production speaks for itself. You know his career throughout you know throughout Michigan, his career at Michigan. Um, no, he's a guy that that you could create mat, uh, mismatches with. You know, getting them on safeties and linebackers. That's something that you know constantly. You know, we're going to you know involve in the game plan and whatnot. And, and as far as receiver skills, uh, me working with him, that's something that pre practice we talk about different things. And he'll come over during special teams. And you know, if I'm doing things with receivers, he'll come over and jump in there. Whether it's ball drills, footwork drills, or just us talking talking about, you know, just uh, techniques that we're going to use on certain routes because the running backs have the ability to do some of the same things, especially a guy with his skill set. Ron, I was sort of going to ask that, that question. Do you expect to use Donovan more in the, in the past game? Yeah, yeah. You know, we – it just depends on, you know, our opponent, you know, where where the weaknesses that we can exploit, things that, you know, ways we could get Donovan going. And, um, 
we we really like our receivers. We really like our tight ends. You know, um, you know, we like Donovan as well. You know, and some of the other running backs can do the same thing. It's just you know week to week. You know, what does a, a, the defense allow us to do? And uh, that's how we decide. You know, like who's going to get the ball and whatnot. I was just curious too. Is you add a pass game coordinator to your title? How does how does that change? Like what? How is your workload change? On? Yeah, just for me, just you know, assistant coach Campbell. Um, you know, with with the pass game stuff, just you know, really being. Um, you know, one of those guys that that understand what the defense is trying to do and the structure of their coverages, and you know, coming in with ideas, and you know, uh, you know, we get together and you know, just trying to to make sure that the pass game's efficient, and you know, we're putting the guys in position to be successful. All right, here, Aaron. Ron, you mentioned the focus on detail with the group. What are you and the staff doing to help the players with that? Yeah, just constantly, you know, constantly emphasizing it, reminders, uh, just just making sure, you know, like I said, the, I think the biggest thing when you have guys that their first time playing, you know, extensive playing time, I'm speaking more so in our room, is is sometimes the guys like, okay, I'm not making mistakes, but you could be certain detail, certain detail at, at certain um, areas. For instance, if the route's at 12, make sure you're at 12. If you're supposed to be, you know, Two yards outside the hash. Make sure you're two yards outside the hash. You know we want to make sure we're exactly where we need to be, uh, so that the quarterback, you know, um, when our numbers call, that we're right at the spot that he expects us to be at. Did you notice those detailed issues in practice before you guys started playing games, or did that kind of come on the last couple of weeks in games? No, I mean, I mean, you notice it throughout, you know, throughout camp. It's something that you just continue. This, you know, you're teaching. Um, it's whether it's. You know, a tenure NFL vet, or whether it's a it's a rookie in a league, it's, it's you're constantly teaching details as a coach. You know, um, we're getting better yourself as a coach, and obviously making your players better. Uh, especially for us, that you know, when you're rotating guys, you want to make sure uh, you know guys understand the importance of details. Ryan, uh, a couple questions. Uh, one, I guess, about the route running. I mean, the, 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 and being on the same page as Davis. Uh, you know, Sharon mentioned that the second interception he threw was. Uh, wrong route, and then in, obviously in the first game, Tyler seemed like he lost track of the ball mm -hmm. there. And you know, Sherrod also mentioned that you know Fred could have maybe you know made a play on the ball on that the first mm -hmm. interception he threw there. Um, you know, what are some of the things that like are being talked about about the you know the route running and just you know some of these kind of um, technique issues? Yeah, yeah. I speak on Fred, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Just one of those things where experience, right? You put yourself in experience where, you know, you just you're adjusting to the ball and I like, go make a play. Now he he made a play on the ball, you know, just wasn't good enough, you know. So that's something in film study you show, like, hey, you know, yeah, okay, you had a couple yards, but now go, you go be a defensive back here, or you go high point the ball and it's yours. Go attack it, play with more more aggressive uh, mindset to the ball, right? That's a learning experience for Fred. Um, going back to Timo, just simply, you know, double move. Just lost the ball in the light, you know. Um, you know, first night game. That's one of the things that you know me as a coach. Like, hey, maybe I send him to the stadium or something, you know, to get under the lights or something like that. So I have to be better there to uh, just make sure that you're just putting the kids in position to be successful. And you know, for us uh, collectively, pass catchers, whether it's receivers, tight ends, or running backs, you know, we're going to elevate our game to make sure that you know, uh, you know, when opportunities present themselves, we're where we need to be on time, the right place. Uh, space for, for the quarterback and go make plays. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. Right now, I mean, Davis is 18th out of 18 Big Ten starters in passing yardage, mm -hmm. uh, average yards per game. Uh, I mean, you, you guys recruited pretty well at the receiver position this, this cycle. Are you, I mean, how concerning is that, though? I mean, in maintaining that kind of momentum and keeping guys, uh, you know, okay with the idea of what, where Michigan stands from a passing game standpoint right now? Yeah, I mean that that's always been, you know, you know, teams use that as negative recruiting, right? You know, our, our style of play. You know, but for us, you know, we're recruiting guys that, you know, fit our style of play, kids that want to be here and kids that understand that well, I mean we do have receivers there in the NFL, you know. Uh, you know, you get a, get the opportunity to play in the NFL system, a pro style offense and um, you're going to be developed here and that's that's our, you know, that's our selling point to recruits. Uh, and they understand that we have talented players at every position here. So that, that has not been an issue for us. Tony? <clears throat> yeah, Ron, uh, just, I guess if you look back now, I mean, Cornelius and Roman, both uh, well, ten, top 10, top 20 in production here all time. Now, given what, what left the room and just sort of how the, the production of the room right now, do you think maybe, I mean, do you think that somebody else could have been added in the, in the portal? Maybe someone else just more proven, just knowing that mm -hmm. it was going to be an unproven room? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that was discussed, you know, um, you know, we're 
we're not like other schools where we're just chasing people. You know, um, I think the big thing for us is we do like what we have in our room. Um, we added some pieces in there. Now it's time for, you know, the guys to, you know, including myself, we all got to rise. And, you know, the, the onus has been on that, um, you know, really challenging everyone in each room, you know, to, to elevate their game, you know, play with more details. And, uh, you know, once that starts happening, I think you'll see more production in, you know, I, I think that'll kind of answer itself. But, but yeah, you know, obviously losing guys like Roman and Cornelius play a lot of football here in Michigan. You know, the young guys, uh, you know, now's their time. You know, now's the time for them to show that, uh, that they can play at this level. I know you, not necessarily in a, in, a, in a negative way, but and you don't want to single someone out negatively, but is there is there one person who you, who you just have such a high expectation of, you are challenging him specifically, like, hey, we need you to be the guy? Um, all of them, really. You know, I, I think you... You know, you put you put the added stress on just picking one particular person. I mean, all, all our guys have they have very unique skill sets that I think it it makes it harder on Saturdays for defenses to like. Okay, we're going to single this guy out, but like I said, once the production rises, you know, then obviously that becomes more stress for the defense. So that's something that we constantly, you know, guys have different skill sets that are better than others that you got to utilize on Saturdays. And you know, moving forward, that's 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 our goal. Alejandro. One of the guys you added was Amorian. Uh, what are his biggest hurdles to seeing the field at this point? Yeah, like just just to transition from defense to offense. Um, although he was on offense his freshman year, we we changed some things. So um, just that hurdle. That's that's kind of been the biggest hurdle now is kind of just getting the consistency there. Uh, super talented guy, super talented player. Um, he's getting more and more each and every day. He's getting more and more comfortable. Um, you know, um, acclimating himself back into the receiver room. So you know, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll. You know, be ready to to roll with uh, Awok. You know, he's he's talented, and I love him. And um, you know, he's uh, you know spending you know a lot of time you know working on his craft to uh, make sure he gets on the field more. Got time for a few more. We'll start with Ryan. Uh, a lot of discussion, obviously. It also was about you know getting better separation. Mm -hmm. uh, if they can't do that, you know themselves one on one. I mean, how much is it on you and Kirk to kind of scheme those guys up? Yeah, we do. I, I think the biggest thing is uh, if you don't watch the All 22, it's easy to say that because the announcers are saying it. I don't think that's necessarily true. But uh, but if we are running to a situation where the deep the DBs may be more skilled than receivers, then obviously from uh, a conceptual standpoint, you do that. You scheme your receivers open, whether it's motion stacks, whatever it may be. Uh, but um, we've done a good job of that in the past, and if we need to do that, we we have those resources. So, uh, but I think more or less that's just, you know, no disrespect. I think it's more TV talk. You know, you, you got to watch the all twenty-two to kind of truly see it. On the left, there, Ryan. Uh, Kendrick even said yesterday that he would, he he was surprised with how many snaps he played in the opener and how mm -hmm. much he's played the first two games. I guess. What has he done to kind of maybe elevate himself on the depth chart and, and become a, a reliable guy to be put on the field so quick? He's smart, sharp. Um, he's a bell. You know, as I told him, you know, he's a bell. Um, you know, he he's uh, really elevated himself in spring ball. We didn't have a ton of receivers in spring ball, so he took a ton of reps. Uh, and he just grown from that, from spring ball to his summer development, the things that he's done. I mentioned earlier, you know, him getting with Ronnie and, um, you know, he came back this, uh, you know, came back fall camp, you know, had a great fall camp. And, and now, you know, he put himself in position to compete for, you know, starting job. And, you know, for us, you know, guys that you can count on that's reliable, that's the ones you're putting on the field. And, you know, Kendrick, you know, his number was called and, you know, he keeps – he shows up in practice all the time, and now it's just a matter of the more opportunities he, you know, he gets, um, I'm, I'm more, I'm sure that, you know, he's gonna, uh, you know, make it happen. So now I'm excited about Kendrick and where he is, and you know, there's still a ton of room for growth. He's, he's a redshirt freshman, but um, he's definitely on the right track. Is, did you get a sense that he, uh, Ronnie still has a major influence on him? They talk all the time, you know. Um, you know, Ronnie and I talk too. Obviously, you know, having Coach Ronnie and, uh, you know, Ronnie and Kendrick talk, and you know. Uh, Things that that Ronnie's seeing with the 49ers at the professional level, you know, he's sharing some things with Kendrick, and um, you know, Kendrick could come to me, uh, you know, ideas and different things like that. That you know, he's talking to with his older brother. So, uh, no, that that that's why Kendrick is playing more and more. Uh, like I said, he's just going out there, and he doesn't look like he's you know a redshirt freshman out there. He's you know older guy, makes plays, and you know, hopefully, you know, if he gets more opportunities, you'll, you'll see that.